to another edition of Diaspora Network, the show where we celebrate Nigerians who are doing great things across the globe. I'm Ijoma Onyato. On the show today, we beam our spotlight on medical tourism. Find out the significant role Nigerians in the diaspora play in the booming medical travel sector. Our special report highlights state-of-the-art health facilities around the world and the men and women that run them. And then don't miss our chat with Dr. Ijoma Akunyili, a woman whose quest for excellence has seen her make history. We have a rich package for you over the next 30 minutes. But first, let's take a look at the news this week. Nigerians across the diaspora have mostly welcomed the central bank's decision to extend the deadline for exchanging old Naira notes to February 10th, after those living abroad complained about being excluded from the scheme due to a lack of exchange points and the availability of the new notes. The central bank governor, Godwin Emifele, said recently in an emailed statement that the extension will give all Nigerians that have legitimately earned the opportunity to exchange the old notes at banks. Nigeria began issuing redesigned 200, 500 and 1,000 Naira notes in mid-December 2022 to mop up excess cash sitting outside of the banking system. Despite the 10-day extension, some economists are still suggesting that the Nigerians in Diaspora Commission should be called upon to either negotiate or liaise with the central bank to give a separate timeline and or a deadline for Nigerians living abroad to enable them to change their Naira to either the newly designed notes or any currency of their choosing. Threats to impose new restrictions on visas for international students would harm UK universities and undermine the UK's growth, education officials have warned. The stark finding follows a leaked report which suggests the UK's Home Secretary, Suella Braverman, is planning to cut the time students are permitted to remain in the UK after finishing their studies to just six months, shortened from two years. The move is expected to substantially reduce the number of unskilled foreign workers coming to Britain, part of a much wider Conservative Party pledge to cut net migration. A spokesperson at Universities UK said the policy change would be an act of self-economic harm, as most institutions generate a substantial chunk of their revenue from foreign students who may be put off by the change in visa rules. A government spokesperson said immigration policies remain under constant review. Commanding officer Olufumilola Obi has been recently recognized as the highest ranking African American officer in the New York Police Department. Chief Obi, who also goes by Lola, is tasked with the patrol of 12 city precincts in the Manhattan North region, where she states officer safety, community engagement, and reducing crime as her main priorities. Born in the United States, Chief Obi moved back to Nigeria, where she remained until secondary school. At 19, she returned to America and studied an undergraduate course in computer science at the City College of New York. And in 1992, she got a call back from the NYPD asking her to become a police cadet. She says the rest is history. Speaking on her experiences as a seasoned officer and mentor, she says that gender shouldn't separate girls from wanting to enter the force adding that there are many opportunities for anyone aspiring to become a police officer in the country. Chief Obi goes on to say, I hope being a female executive helps to inspire other women to say if she can do it, so can I. Greek Nigerian NBA star Giannis Antetokounmpo recently scored 50 points for the second time this month aiding the Milwaukee Bucks win against the Pelicans, despite his recent knee injury. The basketball star had previously missed five games in a row due to knee soreness, which placed him on injury report. However, he's since become available to play in the team's most recent games and with that, continues to cause waves in the sports world. He is now among just 26 professional NBA players who have scored this many points in a single game at least five times in their career. Responding to this feat, Giannis proudly stated, it's one of those moments you can never take for granted because you never know when you're going to have it again. Nigerian modern fable film Mamiwata 
directed by filmmaker CJ Obasi, has received the Sundance Film Festival's Special Jury Award for Cinematography. Sundance, which is one of the most notable independent film festivals in the world, is known for selecting impactful dramas and documentaries that reflect different themes in societies. Mami Wata, or Mother Water, is derived from traditional African practices that involve the worship of water spirits and is most popular in the West, Central and Southern African regions. Set in the Oceanside village of Ii, the film explores the deity Mami Wata and the story unravels into a violent clash of ideologies and faith among the people who live there. Mami Wata is director CJ Obi's third feature-length film and is heavily influenced by his Nigerian heritage. Speaking on the win, he says he wanted to disrupt the sympathetic gaze which is usually associated with rural Africa and inspire the audience to feel more empathy. Juliana Olayinka with the Diaspora Network News Wrap in London. Now, those who can afford it often leave the shores of Nigeria in search for alternative medical care. That's not news. The real news is that a lot of the top medical facilities abroad are run by Nigerians. So it appears wealthy Nigerians travel overseas where they end up meeting Nigerian physicians. Let's take a look. The global rise in movement of individuals across borders with the intention of receiving better healthcare services is what gave rise to the term medical tourism. Patients from all over the world are adopting this route to seek a wide range of medical, surgical, fertility and post-rehabilitation services. Cosmetic and plastic surgery, dentistry, orthopedic surgery, cardiac surgery, oncology and organ transplantation are some of the most prominent. A number of factors lead to the increasing popularity of medical travel, including high cost of health care, long waiting time for certain procedures, the ease and affordability of international travel and improvements in both technology and standards of care in many countries. Globally, medical tourism has contributed immensely to the growth and development of healthcare systems, attracting people from various parts of the world and adding value to host countries. Turkey, India, Thailand, Europe, Canada, US, UK and the United Arab Emirates are considered some of the leading international destinations for medical tourism. And these countries have a few things in common. They are at the forefront of medical innovation and technological advancement, providing the most recent and safe treatments performed by highly skilled and trained health professionals. These countries have invested heavily in healthcare and as such, are benefiting from medical tourism through generation of foreign exchange revenue and increase in employment opportunities. According to the federal government, Nigerians spend between $1.2 and $1.6 billion on medical tourism yearly. Interestingly, some of the best healthcare facilities in diaspora are run by Nigerians. They contribute at different levels, overseeing skilled medical experts and leading clinical innovations while improving health equity on a global scale. And here are the statistics to back this up. Nigerian-born medical doctor Margaret Mary Wilson serves as Chief Medical Officer and Senior Vice President for United Health Group, a health insurer that covers all 50 states in America and more than 130 countries. Her work in healthcare has taken her across Europe, Africa, and North and South America. Dr. Wilson was born and raised in Nigeria, where she studied medicine at the University of Ibado and went on to train in the United Kingdom and the US. In 2021, she was named one of the top 100 most influential African American leaders in business at the National Diversity Council. Another renowned personality is Professor Iyala Elvis Peterside, named one of America's best physicians for the year 2020 by the U.S. National Consumer Advisory Board. Dr. Peterside is a professor of pediatrics and neonatology at the University of Pennsylvania Medical School and a consultant at the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia, considered one of the best children's hospitals in the world, where he's worked for over 20 years. He also served as medical director of the Neonatal Intensive Care Unit at the University of Pennsylvania Hospital 
and the president of the Philadelphia Perinatal Society. He is a recipient of many awards from his colleagues and professional associations in the U.S. The passion to succeed, make global impact, coupled with inherent resilience is what fuels a number of medical experts of Nigerian origin in diaspora who are recording phenomenal success on the international stage. These experts believe the same level of healthcare delivery can be replicated back home with better infrastructure. Now, a couple of weeks ago, we announced the historic appointment of the emergency medicine specialist, Dr. Ijoma Akunyele, as the chief medical officer of the Jersey City Medical Center in the United States. Today, we bring you her interesting story and a quest for excellence that's taken her to the top of her profession. Nigerian-born emergency medicine specialist Dr. Ijama Akunyele is an embodiment of change, beauty and grace. With over 13 years in medical practice, she has led dynamic teams in improving overall performance across multiple patient-centered metrics while increasing physician staffing. Dr. Ijama graduated with the highest distinction from the University of Pennsylvania and attended the University of Maryland School of Medicine at Baltimore in 2010. She earned an MPA in International Development from the John F. Kennedy School of Government at Harvard University and an MBA from the Wharton School of Business at the University of Pennsylvania. In addition to her executive experience, Dr. Ijoma has vast leadership and advocacy skills. She served for several years on the board of directors of Texas and Connecticut Colleges of Emergency Physicians. She was an assistant professor of emergency medicine at Baylor College of Medicine, Houston, Texas. She is presently a clinical assistant professor of medicine at the Yale University and president of the Connecticut College of Emergency Physicians. One of her most recent role is regional medical director for Team Health Northeast Group, where she had strategic, operational and clinical oversight of nearly 20 emergency departments critical care and hospitalist services lines in Connecticut, New Jersey, New York, Rhode Island, and Pennsylvania. In January this year, she was named Chief Medical Officer of the Jersey City Medical Center in the United States of America, making her the first African-American medical professional to serve in the role. Prior to her current epical appointment, Dr. Ijama Akuyeli has received numerous honors and recognitions for her exceptional commitment to provision of high-quality care to patients, as well as outstanding leadership to the various clinical teams she has headed. She was awarded the 2019 Medical Director of the Year Award for the impressive turnaround of the Waterbury Hospital Emergency Department. Ijama is the first daughter of the late Professor Dora Akuyeli the legendary former Director General of the National Agency for Food and Drug Administration and Control, NAFDAC, and ex-Minister of Information and Communications. Following her appointment as the Director General of NAFDAC in April 2001, Dr. Dora Aquinelli established as a top priority the eradication of counterfeit drugs and unsafe food. She was a pharmacist, pharmacologist, erudite scholar, seasoned administrator, and a visionary leader. She died in 2014 after battling cancer for about two years. Dr. E. Jama Quinelli is happily married with two teenage children. She sees her career path, growth and recognition as a privilege to serve and provide safe, innovative, efficient and equitable care to create sustainable health outcomes wherever she is. Now, the name Akunili rings a bell in Nigeria and in the diaspora. Apart from being associated with pharmaceutical and medical professions, it's also known to represent hard work and excellence. And that's what Dr. Akunili tells us as we sit down with her to hear more. Thank you so much, Dr. Akunili, for joining us on Diaspora Network. Thank you so much, Ijama. Great to have my namesake interview me. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you it. and congratulations uh, on this. That's that's you know, everybody is talking about it. Everybody's excited about it. Um, how do you feel about it? Let's just start from there. This appointment. I'm excited to be the chief medical officer of Jersey City Medical Center. It is uh, one of the one of the oldest hospitals in New Jersey. It's a level two trauma regional facility 
with about 348 beds, 16,000 admissions every year, a very vibrant medical staff, a regional stroke center and cardiac care center of excellence. So it's, um, it's great to make history, but it's so wonderful to be part of the leadership team of this community. I couldn't be happier. Great, and people are happy for you as well, looking at the family name, Akunyili, making the news again. I mean, it's, some, it's a name that resonates with so many Nigerians. Has it played a role in who you've become professionally? I would say what I learned from my parents, and that's the greatest legacy I carry of the name Akunyili, is that we are all greater than ourselves, our individual stories, our individual lives, the things we want and we should reach outside of ourselves to do something bigger for society, whether it's as my mom, you know, living her entire life fighting fake drugs in Nigeria, really um, wanting to do everything she could for the Nigerian people. And then my father, who was a physician, as you know, and taking care of um, some of the poorest people in Nigeria his entire life, from when I was born, actually. Mm. Okay, tell us more about yourself. I know we, we know about your parents. Who is Dr. Ijeoma Kunyili? And... What inspired this, this whole career path, apart from being you know, in a home where you had both parents as, as medical doctors? What's your experience? So I would say, you know, being a physician really started from my father. I don't think I could really tell my story without his. He was a very young doctor outside of medical school and went to the north of Nigeria and lent house and was teach, treating patients. So he, I was always around him and I was his little medical assistant, even when I was a <laughs> seven or eight year old kid, believe it or not. I thought that's what every kid did. And, um, but my personal journey was I moved to the United States. I went to university and actually had a career uh, before medicine. I worked uh, for a while at the World Bank, but I really wanted to influence people's lives um, in a way I thought I could only do by becoming a doctor. So I uh, practiced medicine. I still practice medicine and I grew, uh, became a physician leader. I've uh, always believed that every one of us could bring changed communities. So for me to be part of a change, a change agent and to help communities all over the United States, very diverse communities. It's been a thing of pride. I'm also a mother, so I have two teenage children, so I'm pretty busy. Okay, we can imagine. Um, what's it like being, being a healthcare professional in the U.S., being Nigerian, obviously, in, you know, originally? Um, what are some of the challenges that you, you face? Do you think you, it would have been the same if you were practicing in Nigeria? So I would always start by saying it's been an incredible privilege to, um, I was just texting a Nigerian American I met many, many years ago in an emergency department in Houston. I was the only doctor in the middle of the night and she brought her family and they were so excited that they had a black doctor, a Nigerian doctor to take care of them. So it's been a privilege to take care of so many communities, the black American community, um, the Nigerian American community, and really so many people in the United States. So that's been my experience. Um, whatever path we work in life, we have, we all have challenges. And that's real and valid, but it's not taken away from the exceptional joy I've had to do everything I've been able to accomplish in my career. And I know looking at the life of your, of your parents, them, your mom had always talked about a life of service. She always talked about being empathetic and, all, and also a lot of integrity as well as are those some of the values that are driving you? Um, is it as easy? Nothing good's ever easy. My mom was always the first to tell me. So as a, <laughs> um, you, you, I learned from her and from my both parents that you choose a life of service. You choose to do the right thing, to be a change agent and that's your passion, that's your North Star. For me, um, being part of an equation of a story of creating equal access to healthcare, healthcare equity, all some of those things that the Jersey City Medical Center is very invested in that community, whether it's um, creating access to our world-class facility, food banks, um, integrating the community, working with our uh, community healthcare resources, all those things. It brings me joy because it's my passion. And when you have a passion, then you don't really see obstacles. It's mm. just really about getting to your goal. You, it's, it's, do you think nice. you can replicate what you do at the Jersey Medical Center back in Nigeria? Obviously, you've talked about the world-class facility and the opportunities that are there. Um, and some will look at it and think, yeah, but you could be doing this back home as well, using your skills. 
Do you see yourself doing that? Well, that's very flattering. And the truth is, you know, I mentor so many people from all over the world that doctors and people who want to provide equal access to health care are needed all over the world and in all societies. And remember, there is um, the United States is not a homogeneous society and it's very diverse. And even here in Jersey City, we have Nigerians and um, people who deserve absolute health care. So I, I think there's a need for good doctors everywhere. Nigeria is one of them. So mm. absolutely. There is that need, and I'm just privileged to do what I'm doing at Jersey City. <laughs> nice answer. Now let's talk about um, the the spike in in you know the rate of doctors leaving the country. I'm talking about in Nigeria, um, not mm -hmm. just for for the U.S. but all over the world. What's your view mm -hmm. on that? Do you think um, it's necessarily uh, a good thing in terms of the country benefiting? Yeah. So that's you know big macroeconomic story mm -hmm. and question. But I can you know, speak for myself that in the end, I think people make a lot of choices for themselves, for their families. And um, Nigeria is a beautiful country. And I think there's opportunities to give back, not just give back to the Nigerian society here in the United States, but to give back in multiple ways, whether it's through transfers of knowledge, of information, and life is not static. People work in different places at different parts of their life. So I think the Nigerian diaspora needs to be celebrated as in multiple forms. And, you know, you just don't think of it as a one-time story. In the greater scheme of history, I think the Nigerian diaspora brings a lot of richness to the country. And so for, for young people who look up to you, young professionals who think, I think I can do that as well. If she can, then I can. Um, what sort of advice do you give them for people, people who come to the U.S. and want to succeed? You know, <laughs> what was your, your secret ingredient and how did you do it? So I will tell young people, whether it's the United States or in Nigeria, wherever you find yourself. And this was something my mom would tell me. She's like, you cannot ever give up. And um, for every yes you get, you probably will have 20 no's, but you need to set your sights on what you want to achieve, have your passion, have your North Star and your integrity. And um, it only takes one door to open for you. All right, let's talk about you personally now. Um, I know you, you got an award in 2019. What have you, which of your achievements are you most proud of? What have you, apart from this one that has made headlines everywhere, what's your biggest um, achievement? I'm really proud of being a mother of two wonderful young children. That's great. You know, they are my pride and joy. And I'm proud of all my career achievements. And I'm really proud that I, I hope I'm making my parents proud. That's okay. one of my achievements. And um, I'm just proud to, to be part of a community and to be creating change with or without getting awards or recognition. Yeah. That gets me up every day. Finally, um, when you're not at work and you're not, yes. you don't have your, your head in your medical books, what do you do to unwind and relax? A couple of things. I spend time with my family. Uh, many years ago when I was in graduate school, I was in uh, Trinidad and Tobago in the Caribbean. I started weightlifting, so I do a lot of weightlifting. <laughs> Fun. I know, I know. Really? My mom, I, I, that's another story. She, <laughs> Clearly. she was very big by that, the whole point. And then I uh, started playing the piano during the pandemic. I actually learned how to start learning music when I was at Queens College Lagos many, many, many years ago. Um, so I kept that love of music and I studied music with some of the best music teachers there and I continued so I that's what I do when I'm not all right you know. Re really really great to talk to you Dr. Akunyi thank you so much for your time I know you have to rush off and and, and meet up with other demands but we'll look out for you and, and thanks for doing this for us on Diaspora Network it was wonderful talking to you thank you for the opportunity be well you're welcome And that's a beautiful story of the quest for excellence and impact. So when next you go for a medical checkup, don't be surprised if you run into Dr. Akunyili or thousands of other top Nigerian medics who work in the world's top health systems. And that's the show today. You can catch all editions of Diaspora Network on our website, channelstv.com. I'm Ijoma Onyato. See you next time.